All right, friends, uh, we have a very special video that we are recording now together with Nadir Ahmed, whom I'll introduce in a moment. But a few weeks back, I sat with David Wood, well known for his Islamic apologetics, and we recorded a video together answering the question, is Muhammad prophesied in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, the Greek New Testament, so the Old New Testaments, and our answers, of course, as followers of Jesus, where it's categorically no. On March 26th, uh, my ministry received this email from, Mer from the Mercy for Mankind team. Hi, Dr. Brown. We hope this message reaches you in the best of health concerning the pandemic. Our international Islamic outreach organization, mercyformankind.com, has taken an interest in your recent discussion with David Wood regarding if Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. We found some of your responses to be quite compelling and has caused some concern regarding if what we are presenting as truth to the people is accurate. It is not our intent to misrepresent the Bible to promote Islam. Therefore, we would like very much to have a sit-down discussion with you in which we can ask certain questions pertaining to Deuteronomy 18.18 18, and get answers with one of our scholars. We do not have any Bible experts on our staff, so we think leveraging your expertise would be a great benefit for everyone to ensure that only the most accurate information is being given to the public. Please let us know your level of interest. So, of course, we immediately responded and said, <coughs> wonderful, let's do it. And then uh, we suggested a formal debate on the subject, and instead we were asked, well, let's just have a, a dialogue, a discussion uh, with, one of, uh, with one of their experts, who is uh, Nadir Ahmad, and let's uh, just focus on Deuteronomy 18 specifically and go back and forth on that. So that's what we're here to do. And specifically to ask the question, is Muhammad prophesied in Deuteronomy 18 as the prophet like Moses? So this first time, Nadir and I have gotten to meet each other. And Nadir, uh, we'll start just with three minutes explaining our respective viewpoints. And then from there, uh, you will ask me questions. And if I have questions back for you, we'll, we'll go in that order. But you can kick things off. Just explain to folks what you believe about Deuteronomy 18.18. Sure. Thank you. And uh, nice meeting you, uh, Michael Brown. So, yeah, uh, um, you know, we uh, I guess a lot of, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, comments were made in your discussion with, with David Wood uh, about the, the scripture was being misused. And so I think this is a great opportunity where we can clear the air. So what we believe about Deuteronomy 1818 is that this is clearly referring to Muhammad. He is a prophet like Moses, and we'll show you many ways. Um, Jesus is also sort of like Moses as well, but it's different. See, Jesus is like Moses in a very general way. For example, I, I could claim I'm like Moses. Uh, for example, Moses didn't eat pork. I don't eat pork. Moses was circumcised. I'm circumcised. Um, so there's many examples we can give like this. Moses, uh, uh, Moses was, and Jesus are both Israelites. There's millions of Jewish people who are Israelites. In a general way, you are going to see Jesus. This is this is the way people try to associate uh, Jesus with Moses. However, Muhammad is intrinsically like Moses. And we'll see, not just in a general way, but in a very special, unique way, unlike anybody else in world history. And we'll show many examples of that. Uh, so, you know, let me just go ahead and... Uh, in fact, well, one thing I do want to, before we go, we open up the topic, what I was going to do, I was going to first show, well, here's how Muhammad is like Moses, and we can talk about that. Then we can talk about how Jesus is like Moses, if he is like that. And then we can open up for general objections, and I'll raise many questions and stuff like that. So, But one thing I do want to raise is what Deuteronomy 18.18 18 really says here and what it doesn't say. So I'm going to just share my desktop real quick. So the verse in the King James Bible, it says, I will raise him up a prophet from amongst their brethren, like unto thee. And so, referring to Moses. However, when we read inside the New International Version of the Bible, look where my highlight is. It says, I will raise him a prophet like you from their fellow Israelites. Do you see that? I want to confirm and get... Uh, you know, Michael Brown's expert viewpoint on this, and so we can all agree what the Bible says and what the Bible doesn't say. That from their fellow Israelites is an interpolation, it's a fabrication inserted into the text which doesn't belong there. 
what the new IV did here was wrong. You don't insert your own uh, arguments into the text to make people think that this could only refer to an Israelite prophet, because obviously the Israelites, this is where Jesus comes from, Ishmaelites, that's where Muhammad comes from. So I think that's my three, my, my three minutes. So I will go ahead and I would, my question, I just want to ask Michael Brown again is, I would like for you to confirm this is not part of the text, the Hebrew text of the Bible. Go yeah, ahead, so we'll, we'll come back to your question after my three-minute presentation. That can be your, your first question. But <clears throat> here's where we start, Deuteronomy 18, 15. And it is absolutely impossible, categorically, 100% impossible, for Muhammad to be the prophet spoken of here. Every <clears throat> possible reading of the text in Hebrew forbids it from being Muhammad. Now, we'll show later why well, we can make an excellent case for it being Jesus. But this prophet that is spoken of as the children of Israel come into the land, they need a prophet. This is a line of prophets who ultimately culminate in Jesus. But it says in verse 15, Navi mikir becha me'achicha kamoni yakim lecha adonai lehecha elav tishma'un. So he is explicitly spoken of as from your brothers. That's the first thing. Look at every reference to that, that phrase from your brothers in Deuteronomy. Okay, it occurs several times. It is only speaking about fellow Israelites to separate them from everyone else. Okay, Muhammad is not an Israelite. This one had to be an Israelite, separate it from the other nations. And uh, so, Me'achecha, and before that, Mikir Becha, Mikir Becha, that phrase occurs about 11 times in Deuteronomy. It is a very explicit way of speaking about the people of Israel. So the phraseology, 100%, every single time it's used in Deuteronomy, and even in Torah context, always, without exception, refers to a fellow Israelite. So it cannot be Muhammad, that's number one. Number two, the phraseology that you have in Deuteronomy 18.15 and then in 18.18 18 speaks of God raising up a prophet, uses the Hebrew root, uh, lakum, calm, he will raise him up. That phrase is used exactly again in Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, saying that no prophet like Moses has been raised up by God. And then how is he described? What does it mean to be like Moses? It says specifically, to whom the Lord spoke face to face and with signs, wonders, and miracles. So it cannot possibly be Muhammad because he was not an Israelite. It cannot possibly be Muhammad because he did not work signs and wonders and miracles as Moses did, nor did he have the ongoing communion with God that Moses did. Not only so, but this prophet has to prophesy in the name of Yahweh, not in a general name of the God, but in the name of Yahweh, which Muhammad did not do. As far as Jesus, Yeshua, the whole Hebrew Bible prophesies of him of his birth, of his death, of his resurrection, of when he had to come before the second temple was destroyed. This is one of many prophecies regarding him. So 100% impossible under any fair reading of the text that it could refer to Muhammad. If you want to make a case for Islam, make it outside of this. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, we actually haven't got to the point of how is exactly Muhammad like Moses, but we'll get there. And so, um, and what you're going to actually find when we talk about is Jesus like Muhammad, I'm sorry, Jesus like uh, Moses, you're going to find it's 100% impossible that this is referring to Jesus. But just so that we make it clear, you try to get into the the Arabic word ach, which is also, I'm sorry, it's a Hebrew word ach, which is also the Arabic word for brother, ironically. And um one thing I just want to make it clear, uh, Michael Brown, there is no, can you point to me an explicit verse in the Bible, not interpretation or what you think the word means, where it says, ugh, can only be Israelite. Is there anything like that, uh, Michael? Of course. I, I, okay, I, just, I just referenced it. Okay. When you have the phrase, meachicha, that exact same phrase, or meachecha, mm -hmm. from your brother, from your brothers. For example, in Deuteronomy 15, 7. This is, a, if there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren, this is speaking about fellow Israelite. You had different laws for loaning to fellow Israelites as opposed to others. This is not just ach, you know, which okay. could have a broader meaning, well, let me, or, let me, let me or me Deuteronomy 24, 14, yeah. the exact well, same thing, meachecha, the exact same Hebrew words. So 100%, yes, this is used, and then together with mitkirbecha, those two, you couldn't have made it any more clear 
in the Hebrew based on usage within Deuteronomy that it has to be an Israelite. Yeah. So it's 100% clear that there is no verse in the Bible which says that uh, uh, the brethren, that word ach, can only refer to Israelites. I think we what you have actually no, no, given No, 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 sir. Not oh, here. I didn't oh, oh, say that. Three minutes. I, I didn't say that. Well, well, let's Mike, go let back me, uh, and forth. Here, we can oh, go back and Mike, forth Mike. freely because you're asking yeah, yeah. questions. But you're missing. You're miss back and forth. Okay. Uh, okay. Mike, but, we're but, three minutes. Let me yeah, just say this. Uh, I yeah. suggested a formal debate. I was okay, told we, no yeah. under no circumstances. Instead, you're going to ask questions. All right. So yeah. you ask me a question. If you don't want me to answer till you're done, what? That's totally yeah. fine. That's I have no problem with it. Well, can we do three minutes back and forth? That way we don't like interrupt each other. Uh, oh, okay, so when you're asking me a yeah. question, you don't want me to answer until you're done. Oh, yeah. and then Because you asked me for, and for I God answered. Knows. Yeah. Right. So you, whatever you like, yeah. however we can best have this dialogue, because I want to help your people get liberated sure. from this yeah. misuse of the Bible, which is kind of a disgrace to Islam. It's one of the, the, the most disqualifying right. things that, that Islam yeah. has ever raised, just, just to be candid. Mm -hmm. But however we can best facilitate this in keeping with this request, it is not our intent to misrepresent the Bible to promote Islam. So I want to help you not misrepresent right. the Bible. Yeah. So the, from our point of view, let me just finish my, you know, uh, uh, my point here, because I, I just wanted a quick answer out of you before. <laughs> and then definitely write down the, the points. And when you're three minutes, you can go ahead and respond to me. So that's our point, which, which our point of view is. If you look in the Bible, there's nothing we see which explicitly say, ah, the word brethren there is only referring to Israelite. It's an interpretation, basically, what Michael is giving you. But he said that this word can never refer to Ishmaelites, if I understood him correctly. But I don't think that's true, because we see inside um, Genesis chapter 16, verse 11 over there, it said that, he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now referring to the referring to Ishmael. Now that word strong number, the number, uh, the strong number there is 251, the exact same word used in Genesis chapter 16, verse 11, is the exact same word used in Deuteronomy 18:18. Ach. So he told he told Ishmael, this guy is gonna, you know, shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. He's talking about Ishmael and his brethren, Ishma, uh, fellow Ishmaelites. But let us show for the record that there is no verse, and this is in the Bible, which explicitly states that, uh, you know, Israelites or the, the word brethren can only refer to Israelites. This is their interpretation. Now, here's why I hold uh, uh, Michael Brown to that standard, because we hold ourselves to that standard. If I were to just come up here and give my interpretations, oh, well, the phraseology, according to the phraseology, Muhammad is, is that prophet. You're never going to accept that from us. And neither will us or our Jewish friends are going to accept that from the Christians. Let's first see what the scriptures explicitly says. So, Mike, go, uh, Michael, do you want to go ahead and, and answer yeah, that? Yeah, certainly. So here's what's distressing. And if you're watching carefully, not only is Nadir misrepresenting the Bible, he already misrepresented me. The word ach by itself, brother, can have all kinds of meanings. I could say, oh, brother, what does that mean? I could call lots of people brother. But if you have a legal contract of some kind, and, and you know, it speaks of brother, sister, sibling, has certain meaning. So I was asked a question. There is a specific phrase here in Deuteronomy 18, 15, me achecha, from your brethren. Okay? 100% usage, explicit fellow Israelite, using that phrase, Deuteronomy 15, 7. It explicitly refers to a fellow Israelite. Deuteronomy 24, 14. It explicitly refers to a fellow Israelite. Not just the word brother in general, but the phrase from your brethren has a very explicit meaning in the, De in the book of Deuteronomy. So now, now dear has not only misrepresented scriptures, misrepresented me. We're not talking about all possible ways the word brother could be used, but this phrase from your brethren. Brethren. And remember, this is the children of Israel going into the land of Canaan, and God saying, don't do what the other nations do. I'm going to raise up a prophet from within your own nation. All right. Now, when we go to the other phrase, mikir becha or mikir becha, that we have 11 times that it comes up. 11 times. And you'll see, for example, Deuteronomy 13, 6, mikir becha meaning specifically from your midst as Israelites, 13, 14, 17, 7. 
And then again, 18, 15, 19, 19, 21, 9, 21, 21, 22, 21, 22, 24, 24, 7, all within Deuteronomy. So it's a sham already to say I'm misrepresenting. When I am giving you explicit text based on the Hebrew, we don't need Strong's concordance numbers, explicit text based on the Hebrew. The phrase me'achecha, mikirbecha can only refer to from your fellow Israelites. Now, the NIV edit those words, and so, fine, you can attack a million translations of the Quran, you can attack a million translations of the Bible. We go back to the original, go back to the Arabic, to the Hebrew. The Hebrew is 100% explicit. And, not only so, all of the reason for it is it must be a fellow Israelite who prophesies in the name of Yahweh, not in the name of a generic God or another God. Muhammad did not prophesy in the name of Yahweh. And the main calling card of Muhammad in the Quran is not predictive prophecy, whereas this is the very thing being spoken of here. So the one, one of the major reasons that the Jewish population rejected Muhammad was because they knew that God would not raise up a prophet from outside their own people. The text is explicit. I've given you verse after verse with specific Hebrew phraseology. It cannot possibly, under any circumstance, refer to Muhammad. Oh, thank you, Michael. <clears throat> so you kept saying this can only explicitly refer to Israelites, and you said it over and over and over again. You did not present really any convincing evidence for, for that. And really, this is my point, which I, I want to raise here. This is their interpretation. Now, I did show in the Bible and in, inside Genesis chapter 16, verse 11, God referred to uh, Ishmael, he said, you will be, in fact, let me, let me read the verse again. I, I'm, if I share my desktop real quick here, this is what it said over here. And he shall dwell, referring to Ishmael, he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now, Ishmael is the lineage which Muhammad comes from. So that word is, ah, the same exact word which is used in Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. So we do see that God does ref, uh, call Ishmael, uh, the Israelites the brethren of the Israelites, Ishmaelites, the brethren of the Israelites. So, you know, I think we just got to, uh, Michael, we just got to agree to disagree so we can move on. Because, um, you know, again, this goes back to holding a, a standard. If I were to present this type of, if I were to come here to this explicitly refer to Ishmaelites, it explicitly refers to Ishmaelites, and write that in the NIV, this is only referring to the Ishmaelites. The Christians would object to that and say, this is your interpretation you are putting in the text, and that is dishonest. And I'm was, and I was, I'm a little bit saddened to see that you did not condemn that, because you know this is an issue of contention. You don't write, this was a deliberate attempt by the people of the NIV to mislead the Christian masses so that they don't see the evidence for Prophet Muhammad, which we haven't got to yet. And then you said that the Jews rejected Muhammad uh, because of this. If you read the Sirah, you will see many Jews accepted Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of the prophecies which they see inside the Old Testament. But that's that's a different subject. That's a different topic. We'll go there when we get we'll cross that bridge when we get there. You said that Muhammad uh, or prophesies or worship some type of different God didn't uh, didn't prophesize in Yahweh. We believe in Yahweh. I'll pray to Yahweh right now in front of everybody. Oh, Yahweh, please help me. I need some help. <laughs> so there you go. Now, that's not a problem. Why? Because Muslims, Jews, and Christians, we all believe in the same God. The Torah was put in front of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I have that hadith for you if you'd like to see it, in which and Muhammad said, I believe in thee and the God of thee. What? The Torah, the book of Deuteronomy. So now how can people say we worship a different God? This is just a, a misrepresentation of what we believe. So Going back to the issue of, you know, whether brethren only can refer to Israelites, I think we need to move on from this. We can agree to disagree. And let's talk about how Muhammad uh, resembles Moses, if that's okay with you. Uh, Michael, go ahead, please. Yeah, okay. This is really getting distressing here. Uh, first, I wanted to have a debate. I was told not a debate. just want to have a friendly dialogue and ask questions. This is a debate. We should have formatted it as a debate. Second, you spit on the face of Scripture. I tell you what the language means. It is not just ach. 
God is saying something specific. Does every letter of the Quran matter? Does every word of the Quran matter? Can I just pull something out or must I read it in proper grammar and context? Well, that's what you must do with scripture. I'm not going to agree to disagree because this cannot possibly refer to Muhammad. Now, the phrase from your brothers. Show me once where that phrase is used for anyone other than the children of Israel. The phrase from your midst. Didn't even comment on that. Eleven times I gave you verses in Deuteronomy. Show me where it means from outside your midst. It means Israelites. So for anyone watching with open eyes, I provided 14 verses with zero response, except just generic brother, yeah, brother, the brotherhood of mankind. You could, you could make it mean anything. But the why did God say from your brothers? Why did God say from your own midst? No, I don't agree to disagree. Also, the idea that the NIV didn't want Christians to know the evidence from Muhammad, this is the last thing on their mind in translating it. Christians don't eat. It, it would be the biggest shock in the world for Christians to know that Muslims thought this was Muhammad. It would be so, it would make a mockery of Islam in their eyes. And as far as testimony of Jews receiving Muhammad, we know that the Jewish community ultimately rejected him as a prophet. We, we know that well enough. And again, show me the Quran where he prophesies in Yahweh's name. Just, just show me yud hey vav hey the equivalent in Arabic. I, I need to see that, where he prophesies in that name. But before we go any further, Nadir, I would like you to respond to those fourteen verses I presented and show me, or show me one example where the phrase meachecha from your brothers or mikir becha from your midst can refer to someone from outside of Israel. I don't need to know about a generic ach and how it's used. It can be used a thousand different ways in the Bible. Surely you would know that, okay? Or many different ways. But please, I'd like you to respond to the verses that I gave you, where explicitly from your brothers, from your own midst, must mean Israelite. I'd like you to respond to those 14 verses. Sure, that's very easy. There are 14 personal interpretations where you're imposing your understanding on the text. So um, well, let's go I through them. I've, uh, let's on, let's I go through I've them. Already... I, I asked you hold to go on, through them. Uh, so uh, let's go through well, this. I, I, this is my, th my three minutes. No, 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 but I'm asking you to uh, respond. Me, Mike, I've responded please, forthrightly to, to you. Okay, okay, okay Mike, let, let, let's, we, need to, uh, we need to move on because we don't have a lot of time. We got to talk about how Jesus is we like Moses. We have plenty of time, sir. Like we Moses. have plenty of time. But Jesus. since this was formatted <laughs> okay. a certain way, please, okay. please, Nadia, this is a matter of integrity Mike. to me, okay? okay I have let, plenty of time. Okay. I have plenty of time. I will set aside okay. time for this. This is important. I hate deception. I hate lies okay. i agree to do this he, okay we are we're we are so we're going to push forward to make sure there's no deception no lies i wanted to do a debate no 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 debate mm -hmm. i was told explicitly okay, well, let's, we're all right so debate. now okay so fine okay. i am well, asking you let's go through those yeah. verses you're claiming it's personal interpretation mm -hmm. let's yeah. go through those 14 verses and show me where from your brothers from your own midst can mean outside of israel Let's go through this. Well, yeah. Well, I've already showed it to you. And, and the problem is you did not address Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. I did address 11, it, sir. In which I was did address the same it. Word. Okay, but hold on. Nadir, <laughs> Nadir, uh, please. Okay. You'll have Mike, all the time in the world finish. to respond. You will have all the time in the world to respond. The word ach, brother, can be used in many different ways. As I illustrated, I can call you brother. I can say, oh, brother. I can talk about a brother in the Lord. I can talk about a physical brother. But the specific phrase, from your brothers, from your midst, which is what God chose to use in the Hebrew, must and can only mean from your fellow Israelites. It is a specific phrase in the Hebrew. You're prepared for this? I would like you to go through these verses or just say, I can't, I'm not able to. I'd like you to go through these verses and show me how it's my interpretation rather than what the text explicitly says. Okay. So, uh, but Mike, I just want to make it clear. We shouldn't be interrupting each other because this is my three minutes. No, no, so, there's a, uh, sir, okay. you've already violated the format right out the gate. I was given a false pretense for this, okay? I, I'm assuming the folks who emailed me were not lying, were not trying to be deceptive, are good people. Let, let me read this again. Okay. We found some of your responses to be quite compelling and has caused some concern 
regarding if what we are representing as truth to the people is accurate. It is not our intent to misrepresent the Bible to promote Islam. Therefore, we would like very much to have a sit-down discussion with you in which we can ask certain questions pertaining to Deuteronomy 18, 18 and get answers with one of our scholars. We do not have any Bible experts on our staff, so we think leveraging your expertise would be a great benefit for everyone to ensure that only the most accurate information is being given to the public. So the language is very clear. From your brothers. That's the phrase. From your own midst. I've given you 14 verses using those specific words. That's how Deuteronomy describes it. Okay. Would you please respond to those verses specifically? Okay. Um, Michael, you know, I, I think what, you know, no, no one's being deceptive here. And so uh, maybe this was my misunderstanding. My understanding was, well, I will, I had a list of questions that I mentioned to you, which I wanted to ask you. Uh, the issue about brethren was not on there. <laughs> you know, there were, it was, it was as I told you in the beginning, it was, I wanted to show you how Moses is like Muhammad. And if we could look and see, is Jesus like Muhammad? That was my list of questions. And this is, kind of something which I wasn't really expecting to discuss till the end. I think I mentioned that to you. So uh, the thing is, you know, one thing I just also wanted to point out, let's make sure we don't interrupt each other. We give each other enough time to speak. Um, you know, the thing is what I was expecting from you is an explicit verse which says Israelites are only the brethren, can only refer to brethren. There's really no no verse like that in the Bible. Uh, you brought 14 verses. There are many examples in which I think you showed how Israelite uh, I'm sorry, brethren is used to refer to Israelites. Sure, the word brethren is used to refer to Israelites. But the word brethren can also, was. but God also says in Genesis chapter 16, verse 11, that, you know, you know, he, he talked to them about their, their brethren, the, the, the Israelites, and they are brethren because Abraham had two sons. They're half-brothers from different mothers, Isaac and Ishmael. And so when we go to Deuteronomy 18.15, the, con- the immediate context was they were reaching out to Moses and they said, hey, listen, we want you to talk on our behalf. You know, no, we don't want to talk. God- we don't want to talk to God face to face. We want you to intermed- intercede with us, something like that. So that's when this verse was revealed. Now, the question here is when God said, I will raise up a prophet from amongst your brethren, you know, it may very well be that the intent of God in saying that is that this could very well be an Ishmaelite prophet. Now, that would be a big surprise for them because they were not expecting that. That's very hypothetically possible. And all the verses which you brought up, you know, the 14 verses and you brought up, you know, uh, the other, I don't think can ever eliminate that possibility because the issue here tonight is why didn't God say, well, I will raise up a prophet from amongst your Israelites. You see, so it is not I, but it is the very Bible itself, which is now becoming ambiguous because it can be interpreted two different way. Now, I understand you feel like our interpretation, which actually isn't an interpretation. I haven't given you any interpretation is dishonest. We're a sham. We're spitting in the face of scripture. I totally get it. I totally understand your convictions. That's why I feel like we are not going to see eye to eye on this. And if we can move on to the set of questions, which the email uh, asked me to ask you, well, actually I raised had a lot to it. Uh, I would be, I would really be appreciative of it where we can start talking about is how Muhammad is like Moses. And let's see, do we have a match over there? Because okay, so, right. I, I don't I gave, want to I gave, talk you, I gave you three, I, I gave you three minutes. So yes, sir. I'm going to now summarize what's happened. And if you want to drop the subject and move on, you can do that to the next question. To summarize, there is specific Hebrew phraseology, which Nadir has refused to address. Refused. Whether he's unprepared to or whether he knows it's futile, he has refused. I said, God did not just say, God's going to raise up a brother. No, from your brothers. Every time in Deuteronomy it's used, it means fellow Israelite. And that is the way it's phrased. From your brothers. Period. Eleven times. From your own midst means from the midst of Israel. God could not have made it any more clear in context. Nadir refuses to address those verses, claims the Bible's ambiguous. This excludes an Ishmaelite. 
And the whole context of Deuteronomy 18, read it starting verse 9. When you come into the land I'm giving you, you don't go to the foreign nations. Don't go to them. Don't go to them to tell you the future. Rather, I will tell you what you need to know. It will be someone from your own midst, from within you as an Israelite. Explicit and definite. So I do not agree to disagree. I say there has been a complete 100% misrepresentation, as I have been asked, drawing on my expertise as a biblical scholar. Context is against it, and specific language is against it. And anyone understanding the preciousness of God's word understands that God does not just throw these words out in vain. These are specific, these are purposeful, which I gave explicit scripture for, and Nadir refused to address not even one of those verses. Let's go through them. Let's look at that specific usage. So as clearly as evasive as could possibly be, because the argument is 100% against it being Muhammad. Wonderfully, we have the whole Hebrew Bible prophesying of Jesus, his birth, that he would come and die and rise before the second temple was destroyed, that he would initially be rejected by his own people, but become a light to the ends of the world. So many of the wonderful things that we see taking place in the world today laid out in the Bible, which prophesies Jesus explicitly. So, Nadir, if you want to say we agree to disagree, no, we don't. We do not agree to disagree. I 100% categorically, based on the language, reject your position. And if you want to respond to the specific verses, fine. Otherwise, we leave things here, and you can go on to your next question. Okay, let's, thank you. We'll leave things here, and let's go on to the next question. Okay, so when we look at Moses, who he was, I'm sure, um, you know, you would agree uh, that Moses was kind of a warrior prophet. He dispatched armies to go fight against the Midianites, kill the five kings. Um, he basically uh, uh, engaged in many warfare. Uh, actually, he didn't himself actually engage, but he acted more of a commander leading and dispatching these armies. <clears throat> we see also a similarity with Muhammad. Muhammad was also a warrior prophet. He also dispatched armies. We see, and I'm sure you uh, you would agree, that in the beginning, Moses was in the minority of one. And this is pretty in incredible. In the minority of one, he was able to build this army and lead them to victory. Muhammad was in the minority of one, and he led them to victory. Moses, he um, established a, the a theocratic state. Muhammad also established a theocratic state. And then they both made this great migration where, I mean, you could, you could kind of uh, imagine this where, you know, you have, uh, you have all your followers behind you and you're leading your people out of this land. So this is, these are some of the similarities I just wanted to point out. And I wanted to ask you the question I have, okay, I guess giving you that background, the question I actually wanted to ask you tonight when you, when you get your three minutes, do you, did I misrepresent the Bible in any way? Do you agree that these are similarities? I just wanted you to talk about that. Um, because I think when you were talking with Wood, uh, these issues were not raised, and I, and I wish they were raised. And that was my, that was kind of one of the th things we wanted to talk to you about. So it's kind of an, I, you know, to, to remember those similarities, it's, there's an, an acronym, what? Because who Moses was and what he was is who Muhammad was, what stands for? He was a warrior prophet, the army. They built an army from ground up. They established a theocratic state. And then finally, they made this historic migration. So these are the similarities between Moses and Muhammad. So uh, I'm going to, I know that was, in my, that was in my full three minutes, but my question, which I have, now that I give you all that backdrop, do you feel like I've misrepresented the Bible or do you see similarities? Go ahead, please. Yeah, a 100% categorical misrepresentation because the Bible interprets itself. So Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. So first thing, uses the exact same phrase, God says, I will raise up a prophet. Moses says, he will be like me. So he'll be a fellow Israelite. What does it say here? In Israel. Why? Because God tells you it must be within Israel. That's number one. Number two, 
What does it mean to raise up a prophet like Moses? Kemoshet, like Moses. Kemoni in, in Deuteronomy 18, a prophet like me. Kemoshet, a prophet like Moses here. So what must that prophet be? Is he to be a warrior? No, it doesn't say that. Is, is he to be a conquering king? No, it doesn't say that. What does it say? Is he to have a certain amount of wives or is he to be single? It doesn't say any of that. What it says is this, that the Lord knew him face to face, okay? And he performed So he is distinguished by the signs, wonders, and miracles that he wrought. So first, Jesus, of course, has the face-to-face relationship with his father, God, with Abba. That's one. Two, Jesus performs all kinds of outstanding signs, wonders, and miracles. He is a prophet like Moses. Three, the God of Muhammad is not the God of Moses because the God of the Old Testament is Father. And Yeshua, Jesus, put the Spirit, the Spirit of the Son in our hearts by which we call God Abba, Father. Avino Malkenu, as we, we would say in the synagogue, our Father, our King. Whereas Allah is not the Father, the Heavenly Father of his servants, or the Heavenly Father of Muhammad. And Muhammad, nowhere in the Quran, prophesies in Yahweh's name. So, cannot be Muhammad, because he was not among the Israelites, as Deuteronomy 34 makes explicit. Cannot be Muhammad, because he did not have the relationship with God that Moses did, did not perform the signs, wonders, and miracles that Moses performed. And Muhammad did not prophesy in the name of Yahweh. Please show me that if it's the Quran. Otherwise, you're admitting it's not there. And it's different God. The God of the Old Testament is revealed as Heavenly Father through the Old Testament books and then personified with Jesus coming into the world and bringing us into relationship with our Heavenly Father, the wonderful father-son, father-daughter relationship that we enjoy with Abba, our Father. Muslims look at Allah in a different way. So different God, different prophet, cannot be Muhammad. Okay, thank you. So, you know, I think (laughs) what's happening here, um, uh, Mike, I asked you a question on the similarities between Moses and Muhammad. And you basically, I think you showed, well, here's how he's not like Moses. The Bible says that he should be like this. He should uh, perform miracles. Uh, he does not prophesy in Yahweh. He, um, you know, doesn't have a relationship with God. No miracles, no prophecies. And uh, he has to see God face to face. All these are good objections. I'm glad you raised them. We'll address them one by one. But that original question, the what, um, the what, uh, the what, uh, uh, an acronym I just created. I'm not sure you were able to you you answer that. Maybe you maybe you uh, uh, you know maybe you, you forgot to answer it. But is that clear? I mean, is that is that true? Have I misrepresented the Bible? Because right now, I mean, you're showing okay. Here's how they're how he's not like Moses, and I'll address that. I promise you, reputations are coming. But I was showing you how he is like Moses, and I will address your points later. So I just want to make sure we're we're all good before I address your re- refutations. That yes, they were both warrior prophets. Uh, they came to, uh, you know, they, 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 they dispatched armies to conquer. They both, uh, the A stands for, they both built an army from scratch, ground up. Both Moses and Muhammad did this. They both established a theocratic state, and they both made this historic migration. So very quickly, if I could get a nod, um, Mike, Mike, before I address your, your objections, uh, are, we, are we in agreement on it, that they both did these things? It's immaterial. Okay. Because... So, okay, because well, I'm not showboating. Deuteronomy 34 describes exactly what it means to be like Moses. So you you could have given a million other comparisons, but they're immaterial. Point. (laughs) Let me finish my three minutes. Okay, good. Thank you. So yeah. So, but see, the thing is, you said you said it's immaterial, meaning what he's saying here, he acknowledges and sees the similarities here, but he no, sir. I didn't. I never said that. This is relevant. I never said that. Okay, then what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm not accepting Muhammad's even a prophet. I'm not accepting that. What, what if no, I no, want no, to say he was a mass that. murderer as opposed to most? Okay. I mean, you're, well, you're, I, I'm not accepting any of those to be true, but I'm saying okay. that they're completely irrelevant can, to what Deuteronomy tells irrelevant. us. Okay, let's say they're all irrelevant. Maybe this is, but can you see these irrelevant similarities? Do you acknowledge these irrelevant similarities? I don't acknowledge Muhammad as a prophet. 
I don't acknowledge him as a, as a warrior okay. leader like Moses. No, I see them as very different figures. In no way okay. would I compare so, okay, the, now that, that, the two of okay, them in terms you're of... You're saying they're different different type of warriors? Or what? what, what is your... Because when I said that both were warriors, uh, Moses was a commander who dispatched an army. Muhammad was an, a warrior who dispatched an army. Where, where do you see that there's a problem there? So it's not Napoleon, a warrior who dispatched an army. The right. problem is Deuteronomy tells us what that okay. prophet will we'll be like. Get, I promise you. So, 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 so here, here, okay, so you're, you're asking, me, you're asking okay. me questions to repeat. Okay. It is not our intent to misrepresent the Bible to promote Islam. So you want to get the straight answers from me, not have a debate. If you want to set up a debate right. another time, wonderful. Cool. So no, I okay. do not accept so, those comparisons. But even if one out of five was true, it's irrelevant because Deuteronomy tells us what that prophet we will, will be get like. To Deuteronomy. Now, do you have a problem with they both established a theocratic state? Do you see that? Uh, is there a similarity over there? Can you accept that fact? At a certain level. They both built an army from ground up. Is is that true for both Muhammad and Moses? Nope. They both they started Moses out as a minority. Didn't, of Moses them. didn't build an army. Where did his army come from? Yahweh, Ishmael Chama, the Lord is a man of war. God, yes, the God He is Yahweh him. Tzvaot. Okay. So Moses did not build an army. No, sir. Well, okay, maybe that's just a matter of interpretation. No, I Muhammad will, built will, an army. Moses did, not build a, Moses did not build an army. No, okay. Moses they was were, not successful. We can disagree on. Okay, Moses was not successful. He did not take the promised land. His generation died in the wilderness. But overall, they were successful. I mean, Moses was, they destroyed the Midianites. Is that correct? They did not take, Moses was given a commission to take the promised land and did not because of the sin of the people. Joshua did it. So if you want right. to compare Muhammad That's to fine. Joshua, you can do that. But no, that comparison okay. is invalid. Okay. Well, there, I mean, do you see him as a failed uh, warrior prophet? Is that what you're saying? I don't see him as a warrior. But he dispatched an army to go out and conquer, right? And kill the Midianites. No, that was not an army to conquer the Midianites. That was because of the Midianites seducing the people okay. into sin and God's judgment on them. Okay, so maybe there, uh, yeah, and I think the, the the issue here, you you seem to interpret things different, but it's like we're kind of saying the same thing. We're not saying the you same just don't thing. Want to use... We're not saying okay, that, not, so... not, dear. This is not a game, sir. Okay. We're okay. not saying that. We're not saying anything close to the same. Every okay. scripture I raise, you ignore. And then you go back to polemics. Your show, but no, I'm quoting okay. scripture. You're painting pictures that okay. don't exist to make a non-existent point. Well, here's our okay. I understand you see them all as irrelevant, but let me ask you. But but so you, uh, you know, for us it's relevant because we, and not just us, other historians, by the way, have linked Moses and Muhammad as being similar. So it's so my point here is not just that me I'm misrepresenting scripture, but I could even show you historians and in fact in Time magazine they mentioned that Moses and Muhammad are similar and they're similar in this that they were whether you want to use a military well, commander. Tell you, tell you, tell you what, warrior. I'll yeah. stay with the Bible, and you can quote Time magazine. So you want okay. my expertise? You were here, okay. thank you, because the folks at Mercy for Muhammad worked mm -hmm. again to repeat this. We found some of your responses to be quite compelling and has caused some concern yeah. regarding if what we are presenting as truth to the people is accurate. So I'm okay. showing why it's terribly inaccurate. And thus far, I just want to go on record. Every single verse I have raised has thus far been ignored by Nadir. And when I quote scripture, he's going to quote Time magazine and accuse me of showboating just for the record. So I reject those comparisons. Let's move on to your next questions. Okay, so yeah, let me take my three minutes to address um, <clears throat> the uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34. Now, there is an interesting commentary of the Bible, which I think both Muslims and Christians can agree, okay? Well, first of all, I just wanted to correct you. You said Muhammad, if I understand you said, you said Muhammad never did any miracles. Uh, this is a common hoodwinkle, which I'm not blaming you, but I think some people have given you bad information in which they um, make this accusation. The truth of the matter in the Hadith, Muhammad did many miracles. Uh, and uh, also Muhammad gave many prophecies. Um, so when we go to, um, you know, did Jesus, and then you mentioned Jesus performed miracles, and you try to show similarities between Jesus and Moses. We'll get there. As I said, you know, we're going to do one topic at a time. So I think the right way to read Deuteronomy uh, chapter 34 is based on the commentary over here. I thought it was very good. It says, Okay, so when it says, the verse actually says, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34, it says that, and since never has there arisen 
a prophet in Israel like, oh, okay. can you guys show my desktop? I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, when we go to Deuteronomy chapter 34, it talks about a prophet like Moses. This is very interesting. It says over here, um, um, in, <laughs> and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses. Who is this referring to? According to many of the Jewish people, it's talking about Joshua. Why? Because that's what verse 9 says. It says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, and Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like Moses. So the Jewish people believe that Deuteronomy 18, 18 is actually fulfilled in Joshua. I, I'm not sure if all Jews, but many Jews actually believe in that. So now it goes on to say over here, whom the Lord knew face to face. Well, that God knows everybody face to face. Okay. Uh, but let's keep going here. And it says, and he did all, all the signs and wonders, which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Pharaoh. Now these miracles, signs and wonders who, who which was done in, in Egypt, neither did Muhammad Joshua or Jesus, you know, cast down the stick which turned into a snake. So the commentary pointed out over here that this is simply praising, uh, praising Moses for for his for his edifying for his greatness. But that's not the criteria for like Moses. Like Moses here means like Joshua, but whom the Lord knew face to face. Now it's edifying and glorifying him. So let me see if I could get that commentary and just read read it quick. I don't know if I'm over my time here, <laughs> I don't, but uh, and I, I think this is something which both uh, we as Muslims and Christians can agree. Here it says about the commentary, verses 10 through 12, Moses is praised and with good reason. He was indeed a very great man. So it's very important that we do not use criteria which exclude, interpret the Bible to produce criteria which, ex which ex exclude both Moses and Jesus. Uh, did you want to say anything about that? Go ahead. Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, and it went a little over your three minutes, but I'll, I'll take mine. Right. So to reiterate why this cannot be Muhammad, the lokam navi od be Yisrael. Why does it say no prophet has arisen in Israel? Because that's the explicit language of Deuteronomy 1815 and 1818, as I demonstrated based on the Hebrew from your own brothers, from your own midst. So here, God is reminding us, speaking about Israel. Second, it's not just after Joshua, scholars recognize this part of Deuteronomy was added later to reflect back and say that prophet who was going to be like Moses has not yet been raised up among the people of Israel. Now, as far as knowing Yahweh face to face, no, he does not know everyone face to face. That is a specific idiom that refers back to Numbers, the 12th chapter and Exodus, the 33rd and 34th chapter, where it speaks of the special communion that they had. This is not just that, that, say, with Muhammad getting gripped with a vision or Angel Gabriel speaking to him. No, this was, this was Moses speaking to God and God speaking to Moses. How? Deuteron uh, Exodus 33, like a man speaks to his friend. Now, that's not how Muhammad did, and it would even be irreverent to think of a Muslim speaking to God the way a man would speak to his friend. So that was the intimacy Yeshua, Jesus, had with him. As for the signs and wonders, the whole ministry of Jesus was marked by signs, wonders, and miracles. That was the whole, that is a constant theme of the New Testament. It is not a theme of the Quran. The fact you have to go to Hadith, okay, that, that you can't find it within Quran or that these were not his credentials or the number one proof a Muslim will give you for the inspiration of Quran is that there's no book like it and Muhammad was inspired to speak it. So his relationship with God was totally different than Moses had and Jesus had. That's one. Two, he did not come from among the people of Israel. Three, he was not known within Quran as a miracle worker. Four, he did not prophesy in the name of Yahweh. Five, the God of Muhammad is very different than the God of Moses and the God of Jesus. So again, point for point, categorically, Deuteronomy 34, just like Deuteronomy 18, rules out Muhammad as a possible candidate on every level and every score. Happy to move on to your next question. Thank you. So 
Uh, yeah, you you quoted the verse that who did signs and wonders, but the verse says in Egypt to Pharaoh. Jesus did not do that. Muhammad didn't do that. So I think the commentary where they said this is simply a praise of Moses. This is not talking about, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> that this is what like Moses is supposed to, a prophet is supposed to be like this. That's not the right interpretation. Now, you've given your interpretation that, you know, Muhammad did not prophesy in Yahweh, that God is very different. These are all your own personal interpretations. These are not facts. So I'm just going to brush those aside just for, because of time's sake, because we haven't got to how Jesus is like Moses yet. Um, and so you said this is in the Quran, not in the Hadith. I don't see any difference there. This is, it is clearly listed inside our books the miracles of Prophet Muhammad's. So the issue here now, I do want to show you, you know, it says that the Jewish understanding of who, of this book here, it says rather, this is coming from Professor Hans uh, Barstad, uh, you know, in, in, his, in his journal, the International Journal of Nordic Theology, he makes it very clear, rather the prophet like Moses is Joshua. And we can also, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, can you guys look at my desktop here by any chance? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, and of course, Dr. Carmen Palmer. So the Jewish, I, I'm not sure if all Jews believe in this. This is something I still got to research. But as he was talking, as she was talking about the prophet like Moses, he is a prophet like Moses, referring to Joshua as a prophet. So, and that's clear. That's clear from the context of the Bible that when it says over there, and there arisen not a prophet in Israel like Moses. In fact, let me get the verse in front of me. I don't want to paraphrase and I just lost my thing. So from, jo uh, from Joshua, 34, verse 10, when it talked about there has arisen not a prophet uh, like Moses since then, uh, this is clearly talking about Joshua. That is what the context says. And this, who was Joshua? You got it. He was a warrior prophet. This is a smoking gun. Okay, Joshua 34, um, Deuteronomy chapter 34, 10, like Moses is defined here. And we agree with our Jewish brethren, uh, friends on not misrepresenting what this verse means. When it talked about that, it was talking about a warrior prophet, Muhammad, Joshua, and Moses fit like a hand in the glove. So, you know, I think, um, you know, the, the point which I want to make over, in fact, I want to bring up all another point. When you actually Google, um, you know, warrior prophet, if that means anything, but I, I do like the Google algorithm and I do, I just want to bring that up. On the first page, you will find Muhammad, and on the first page, you will also find Joshua. So my point here is even the Google scientific algorithm can link these people together as well as other historians. So we have a smoking gun here. When God said, like Moses, he was referring to this motif that we see all throughout the Bible about this warrior prophet who, number one, established, uh, you know, dispatched an army, conquered lands established a theocracy. All right. So you're going well over your yeah. time each time. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, go ahead, please. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. There's no smoke. There's no gun. If I was not actually hearing this with my own ears, I would think that Nadir was a plant to make Islam look bad. I, I mean, it's that mind-boggling and possible. So let me point out again, none of this is my interpretation. Nowhere in the Quran does it say that Muhammad prophesied in the name of Yahweh. And yet this was a prophet of Yahweh, number one. Number two, Muhammad did not know God, let alone specifically Yahweh, face to face and have the communion with him like Moses did, like Jesus did. Number three, the God of the Quran is different than the God of the Bible. Allah is not your heavenly father if you are a Muslim. If you're a Jew or a Christian, you look at God as your heavenly father. And Jesus specifically called him Abba, which is the most intimate term for father and the term that we use as well. In addition to that, there is a specific Hebrew phrase. I, I don't need Time Magazine. I don't need Google. I don't need a list of, of other scholars' names. And I could give you endless lists of scholars to, to prove my point. I'm just staying with scripture, with Bible. Again, I was asked by a group reached out to me very kindly. They were disturbed, they were shaken after watching David Wood and me blow these things out of the water. And they said, we do not want to misrepresent the Bible to promote Islam. If you're an honest Muslim watching, you're realizing that that's the only way to promote this argument is to misrepresent the Bible. 
there is a specific Hebrew phrase, kam navi, raise up a prophet. It is used in Deuteronomy 18. It is used in Deuteronomy 34. And it is a prophet like Moses from your brethren, from your fellow Israelites, as Deuteronomy 34 explicitly says. So the more we compare Moses to Muhammad, the more it falls apart. It falls apart instantly because he's not an Israelite. It falls apart instantly because he did not prophesy in the name of Yahweh. It falls apart instantly because he did not have the relationship with God that Moses did. It falls apart instantly because the Quran does not recount his signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, the reason it speaks of the signs, wonders, and miracles that Moses did in Egypt, that's where he did his. And Jesus did his in the land of Israel. That's where he did his. It doesn't say it has to be in the same land, but they are known for this intimate relationship with God, and they are known for signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, as for, quote, the Jewish idea that this referred to Joshua, well, we know, in fact, it doesn't. Deuteronomy 34.10 tells us that it can't ultimately refer to him. And that's why Judaism at the time of Jesus, as represented in the Dead Sea Scrolls, was looking for an eschatological prophet, an end-time prophet, because they knew that there was a prophet still to come that would be a prophet like Moses, a miracle-working, intimate-with-God prophet. And that's why Peter, in the New Testament, hundreds of years before Muhammad was ever born, tells us in Acts the third chapter that Jesus is the one that Moses spoke about, and whoever does not listen to him will be cut off. So no interpretation here, just simple fact. I had 10 seconds to go, but that's fine. Yeah. Just simple scriptural fact. That's all. I'm happy to move on to your, your next question. Okay. Well, you know, you talked about misrepresenting scripture. Uh, the Jews and many, as, I, as I've shown you from my references from the, uh, you know, from, from the journal, they, they clearly said this is referring to Joshua. I gave you two references for that. They see when you, what you just said about how, you know, this is referring to Jesus. They see that as a misrepresentation and twisting of the text. Actually, Jewish people, and this is where Jews and Muslims stand united together uh, against the Christian misunderstanding and misrepresentation of Joshua chapter uh, 34, verse 10. It really is a smoking gun. I think the, you know, it, 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 is, uh, it answers everything as far as who that prophet is. He is supposed to be like Joshua. Let me just read it again. Uh, it says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses. And as I read from the commentary, um, you know, the Jewish r r rabbis clearly and scholars clearly just stating the obvious. This is referring to Joshua. Who was Joshua? He was a great warrior prophet. Who was Moses? A warrior prophet. So when God said, like Moses, this is referring to a warrior prophet and Jesus doesn't fit in here. Now we go back to that NIV Bible. Remember when they stuck in that phrase from their Israelites? Now we know why they pulled that stunt, because Muhammad is very much like Joshua, Moses, and Muhammad. These are three which are, which are very identical. They share that genetic DNA of being that successful warrior prophet. They, they, um, they both established a theocratic state. They both led this migration. And we see so many of these uh, you know, uh, similarities between them. So really, you know, what I've seen from you is just a bunch of interpretations. God, you know, the God of Islam is very different. That's your interpretation. You know, I don't, you know, you, you said that, you know, they basically, no relationship. This is your interpretation. Jesus is the one. That's your interpretation. And everything just falls apart. That's your interpretation. He, no, it has to be an Israelite. That's your interpretation. And, you know, all, and this is my point here, what the Christians present to you are just uh, subjective interpretations. What Muslims present to you is fact. That's why he didn't want to go to Time magazine. That's why he didn't want to go to see what Google said and other people who can weigh in and say, yeah, the Muslims are right. Moses and Muhammad are very similar. So he wants us. And so I think we can move on and talk about how Jesus is like Moses and all what right. you are going to find he is not. Okay, so in all candor, this has been a completely deceptive setup. 
either Mercy for Muhammad lied to me in their email, or Nadir has come in with his own agenda completely. I would have been very happy to do a debate and steamroll and demolish and crush every single one of your unbiblical misrepresentations, sir, with joy. Instead, you were asking me questions. You're not presenting arguments. You were supposed to come and ask me questions. I'm answering the questions. We move on. So to reiterate, the text, not my interpretation, not Time Magazine, not Google, the biblical text explicitly states he must be an Israelite using terminology that Nadir refused to acknowledge. So Nadir mocks the Bible, spits on the word of God, and then makes it even worse that he's doing it in the name of Islam. Just want to be clear. He also makes a mockery of the Jewish faith, saying, we know it's Muhammad because the Jews say it's Joshua. Well, if the Jews say it's Joshua, then believe the Jews, but don't quote the Jews to then dismiss the Jews. But it just so happens that I'm looking at the foremost rabbinic commentaries on Deuteronomy 18, 15. And what does it say? What does Rashi say? The number one Jewish biblical commentator, that a prophet will be raised up prophet to prophet throughout the ages. It's speaking of lines of prophets. In fact, there's one Jewish interpreter after another that does not say it is just Joshua. So you're misrepresenting Judaism on top of it. And to say the NIV pulled the stunt, no, they rightly explained the text. No, it should not be done in the translation. There should be a footnote explaining that. But there's no stunt. The only stunt is what's going on here that someone completely unqualified to deal with the objections is trying to pull magic uh, rabbits out of magic hats and call them smoking guns. Everything that I have read, I'm just reading Hebrew scripture, okay? Hebrew Bible. And if you want me to get lists of thousands of scholars that agree with me, that's fine. But I don't need them because I have the explicit text to repeat Moses prophesied in the name of Yahweh, and this prophet must prophesy in the name of Yahweh. Muhammad did not. Moses had a different relationship with God than Muhammad, and not only so, not a single Muslim on the planet has the relationship that we have with God as our Father through what Jesus has done. And every alleged parallel is so far off the mark, especially when Muhammad from the gate is excluded because he's not an Israelite, that it makes this laughable. So, sir, I'm happy to go on if you will abide by the guidelines. I wanted to do a debate. We were told no. You were coming to me as a Bible expert. You're obviously not a Bible expert. You're coming to me as a Bible expert. I'm not a Quranic expert, okay? Asking me questions about the Bible. If you'd like to ask me questions and I respond and we go on to the next question, that's fine. Otherwise, we can just leave things here and present this to the general public as is. So if you'd like to go by... What I was asked to do and what my assistant specifically went through with your folks who were told, no, 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 we do not want to do a debate, which I can see why. If you'd like to go back to simply asking me questions, I give you my response and you go on to the next question. That's perfectly fine. If, if you want to set up a formal debate afterwards, we'll cut this here. All right. Put this out for the general public and then schedule a formal debate. So your call. We proceed as for the guidelines, which I assume truth and ethics are important to you as a Muslim, or we just drop it here and we continue with a formal debate in the future. You tell me, sir. Okay, yeah, let's do that formal debate. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, there was a misunderstanding. Uh, uh, I believe before this discussion started, um, you said, oh, I like debate, and so go for it. I think you said something like that. So I said, okay. But we sure, were told no explicitly problem. what the guidelines were. Okay. And I was, right, well, I'm, I, I'm I adhering to them. I'm not, well, you know, I'm not accusing you of yeah. being deceptive. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. saying, I, I am saying you're I, totally, m unbelievably butchering the Bible and spitting on scripture and making a mockery of Islam yeah. as you do it. I'm quite clear on that. But perhaps you and Mercy for, Muhammad, uh, Mercy for Mankind had different agendas, and that's what happened. There was a mix up in your communication. Perhaps that's what happened. Yeah. All right. And I'll take the blame for that. All right. Because I, might have had a misunderstanding. So, but let's set set up that debate, and we can discuss this. But, um, you know, you, you used a lot of condescending terms to me. You spit, you mock, you sham, you, you misrepresent, and all these things. And I think that's why I kind of had to give it right back to you, but with strong, powerful arguments. So, uh, not not with that same kind of venom. 
Uh, but yeah, so I tell you what, did you want to co- talk about how Jesus is like Moses, or did you want to just wait for our formal debate? Well, let's let's do it in a formal debate. We'll, okay. we'll be very specific on our topic, sure, subject sure. matter, times. But I just want to alert you, when we come to cross-examination, you're going to have to respond this time. You will not be able to hide. I also responded forcefully because you made some very wrong statements right out of the bat. Mm-hmm. And, and I felt it was very important to, to draw attention to that, especially when, when I asked specific questions that were completely uh, avoided, as anyone watching this will, will see. So mm-hmm. let's assume that, that uh, Mercy for Mankind was 100% sincere in reaching out and that everything that they said in that email was what they intended and that there was a misunderstanding between you okay. and, and them or somehow in the communication to us so I'm not accusing you of intentionally deceiving or setting things up. My preference that I wanted from the start was a debate. Okay, that's obviously yeah. your preference. So God willing, uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll be very specific in terms of, of what we target, what our guidelines are, so that we're fair <clears> to <throat> one another. But I just want to I give you time to prepare. When I ask you specific questions about specific verses, you're going to have to be able to respond this time as opposed to put them off. And, and you've got yeah. adequate time to prepare. You know some of my fundamental arguments, sir. All right? Mm-hmm. Right. And thank you for that. And I will go ahead and, you know, I'll already have my preparation uh, done. It's all your own interpretation. So you know what I'm going to be giving you. But we will get inside those, your personal interpretations when that time comes. So, so in other so, words, when I quote yeah. a verse that the yeah. verse says A, B, C, and I say the verse says A, B, C, your response is going to be, well, that's your interpretation? That won't work, no. sir, in a debate. That, that's okay. all you're we'll, saying we'll, is, we'll, we'll, I don't we'll have an out. answer. All I can we'll do is accuse you of interpretation, right? That's why, look, this is my field, you know, Hebrew Bible, Semitic scholarship, words, language, grammar. It ha- they have meaning, right? And, and, and I think you as a Muslim would, would hold to that as well. So uh, we'll move forward, God willing, but we have this recorded uh, as soon yeah. as it's up with our agreement. You can put it up. Uh, we'll allow open comments on our end, uh, on our YouTube channel, as we always do, and let folks know this is available, and then look forward to a formal debate. This time I'll have a moderator. We'll set it up a certain way, God willing, and uh, we'll do it for the edification of every truth seeker. Sound good? Sounds good, yes. All Thank right. You. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.